Hola guys, bienvenidos, welcome, welcome back. Um, I just pulled up, I got a hotel today. So we got a cooler down in the kitchen. They didn't tell me if it was a walk-in or a reach-in. So we'll go find out together and we'll see what I can record. We'll see what happens. So we got a hotel here. It looks like they're remodeling as well. Let's go inside. Well, this is all warm already. frozen obviously on power let's get this back off So we got it on non-contact voltage. Nothing there. And that's a power cord. Probably the temp control's out. Alright, so this one ohmed out fine. If you check the two terminals and they're closed and it's on, it's fine. So, might be the timer. So we're cooling, so it's a defrost timer. All right, so if I'm being honest, being my own boss, I can pick and choose what work I wanna do. I don't like doing that kind of work. Um, usually one of the guys has that location because it's mostly residential type of equipment. It's a, it's a hotel with a small kitchen. And uh, basically, I, I'm actually not super familiar with residential type work, but considering that the compressor and fan are off, so that's usually my, the first thing I look for on, on a, on a reach-in is if the fan was off. Because if the condensing fan is off, that means there's no power to the whole condenser, condensing unit. Uh, if it's, if it, the fan's running and the compressor's off, then your compressor's, there's something wrong with your compressor either 
starting components, uh, overheating, low on charge, something like that. But if the, if the fan is off too, then you have no power there and something else, which is usually a uh, control, is not working. So I use a little non-contact voltage feature on my meter. I just kind of poked it around there and I had obviously had power because I had the light on, but um, no power to the compressor, no power to the fan. Went ahead and just took off uh, the panel inside to see the controllers. Uh, I thought it was going to be the temp control, so I checked that one first, but it ohmed out. So in the on position, uh, you can just check continuity across. It should be closed. And it was. You turned it off. It, it broke and it opened. So it wasn't that. So you're just checking for the beep. You know, if it beeps, it's closed. If it doesn't beep, it's open. And then uh, from there, we went or I went to the defrost control and I wasn't recording, I was actually talking to the lady there because she was trying to tell me uh, what was going on and as soon as I uh, moved it a little bit, it clicked and I was like, it probably clicked on and what happened is it got stuck in defrost uh, and it didn't come out. When you're doing any kind of work in uh, HVAC refrigeration you, you want to talk to the customer and just uh, ask basic questions. I first, the first question I usually ask is when did it start happening? Because uh, when I went in, when I was working on it and she came in, I was like, so did this uh, unit, did it turn off today? Or when did it, when did you notice it wasn't working? And she's like yesterday that it, it stopped working. And then uh, she said that they unplugged it and plugged it back in. They thought it was working, but eventually just got hot so it's been down since yesterday so that's why if I find that defrost timer still in defrost it's stuck in defrost so if you ask the right questions you can get um, like a diagnosis from the customer they'll diagnose it for you they'll tell you when it happened or what's going on um, like the other day, like I have a video coming out for the walk-in, um, what do you call it? The defrost termination and fan delay. Same thing with the customer. They sent, sent us a video, but they also told me that the fans had been off all day. So considering that, it was either, it was some sort of defrost issue. Because um, on a freezer, when the fans are off, that's defrost. So. Uh, I'm just gonna go get the part. They were cool with me fixing it. They are a lower budget place, so I had to make sure that they were gonna pay. And then uh, once I got the okay, because I, I had to tell them more or less how much it was gonna be, they were like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Because you know those residential coolers are super cheap to get, which is why I don't like working on them, but I was covering for a coworker who's out sick. Normally I get to pick my own and I like walk-in freezers, coolers, bigger equipment and usually the franchise type of locations that still give me NTEs but they're not, they usually let me do the work that needs to be done. So let's go pick this up and I'll get back to it. All right guys, so we got a Subco replacement, Universal. I love uh, Subco because they always make um, stuff that, that'll get you out of a bind because they don't have any like originals. I would have to find like an appliance store or something. So I went to Johnstone and they had a Subco. So we're going to go put this on real quick and be done with that one. Alright guys, so I'm just going to quickly go over it. So we're going over the 115 and this is a 10 amp uh, defrost control. So this is a defrost timer. Usually you see these on residential and small reach-ins, uh, small reach-in freezers. 
Now this one's a little bit different from the old one since we didn't uh, replace it. I don't have the old one to show you. This one has the minutes that are adjustable and then how many times during the day you can have defrost. So that one's set to six times a day at 20 minutes. That's a default. That's fine. And you can adjust that. Now this one has a button, so I believe that's to switch it back and forth. Right now we'll check that. It says push and hold for 30 seconds to alternate between run and defrost. And then here's our little schematic that's etched in the back here. So we got normally open, normally closed. So that should be refrigeration, that should be defrost. And then the line voltage should be one and three to power the clock on this timer okay so right now we're on tone i'm just checking continuity so like i said we have a normally closed here on one and four so i have a tone right so if i check across that's closed and it's normally open right here you're powering because you're going to have line on one and three and then you're passing power through to your refrigeration cycle your temp control and all that and then uh, this goes to the heaters and then this disengages your your condensing unit and everything your control and your condensing unit and then uh, this will engage your heaters for defrost so it says if we hold let's see All right, so I'm pretty sure you need power to, to be able to switch it. Uh, I tried holding it, nothing happened. So this is a replacement, a direct plug and play. Here are the terminals that I showed you. And then here are the proper labels. You got line one, two is defrost, like I had mentioned, that's for your heaters. Three is to the motor and line two. So that's this side over here. And then four is a compressor. So that's gonna be your condensing unit for refrigeration basically. And it gives you some advice if you have a different type of controller um, to carefully bend some terminals. And that's it. These are the directions here. Simple, straightforward, and not much to it. These usually go by amps, so the one I have is a 10 amp. They also have 208 ones and different amperage. Now this one is a press and hold to advance or switch between modes. Uh, the one I did or the one I checked and the one that you'll see most of the time in a, in a region or residential is going to have a little... Uh, clock with a flat screwdriver you can turn it it's just going to be a little uh, dial kind of almost flush and you're going to turn it and it's going to be like a, um, a mechanical defrost clock and you'll be able to hear the gears turn as you turn it and then it clicks when it's switching between defrost and um, refrigeration so that's the only difference there All right, guys, and I don't want to take it too much apart because it I do want to return it. And this one is full electronic. We got a board in there with relays and different components. Now, that's why you need to power it up to be able to switch it back and forth because it's not mechanical. Now, I wish I had the old one to, to show you guys because the old one's going to be mechanical. So that little clock is just going to be some gears. And then it's going to be switching contacts between and making these different terminals touch or disengage. And that's going to be the major difference here. This is a replacement. They went full electronic on it. And that's going to be the difference there. Uh, the old one is just simple contacts. And I'll go over 
the commercial type also as well I was just gonna go over this one real quick something simple if you guys work on residential or small region freezers you'll most likely see these unless they also went full electronic and they have uh, one of those controllers that does everything all right guys so i hope that helps it's just a quick little uh video on some small defrost timers those are usually considered like residential uh timers or whatever like i said i wish i had the original it's mechanical so if you guys ever run into a residential type uh fridge or a small under counter freezer i've seen these in too if you guys see the temp control and then another another little opening for a screwdriver and you see that little slotted dial that's going to be uh, the defrost so if you're if nothing's coming on you might want to uh, go in there and turn that uh, that's a common issue in those those kinds of, of uh, freezers or you know cooler freezer combo and uh, all you have to do is turn them and the units should turn back on. You replace them because they usually get stuck in defrost. And I'm gonna go over the commercial uh, defrost timers as well. Maybe in the next video, I do have a couple that failed. And it's basically the same concept, just a different size and look, but uh, you're gonna have contacts going back and forth. And then you also have an electronic type a uh, commercial clock that's like this one that I had that is a board with relays. Now the only thing with relays on any kind of board is that they can stick. So like on a mechanical uh, with contacts that you can physically see moving back and forth with a dial, usually the contacts get pitted uh, some or they get stuck, they weld shut, uh, the you know the timer might not work and on uh, electronic boards like I said the relay could get stuck a lot of times you can bang them with something and they'll they'll switch over like they're supposed to and uh, yeah hope this helps somebody simple video and I see you guys